What is going on guys? Today's video is a little hodgepodge of stuff I got going on. There's quite a few different things. Um, got some stuff to insert about the 240. Uh, getting that ready for burnout contest in August, end of August. Is it really end of August, September um, in Bristol? I have to, I'm not hundred percent sure on the day, but it's pretty ready to go. Those tires will probably last another four burnouts. That's not how they're supposed to work, but it's kind of how the 240 operates. Uh, this car, it's ready to go racing for the most part, like 98% ready, just really has been parked. Um, for those not in Florida, it has been 100 degrees every single day, and I try to take the summer off of racing, as little racing as possible in the summer. October is FL2K, and that's what I kind of uh, look forward to every year. I don't Going to the track this time of year doesn't really excite me. I mean, we're inside right now and it's, it's cooler than outside and it's 90, so pretty pretty hefty. Uh, 90 and it's 80% humidity, so yeah, pretty healthy. And that's not even in the sunlight, so you can imagine. Feels like 110. Uh, not complaining too much, but it's more just my answer why I don't, why I don't go racing in the summer. A lot of people are wondering. Um, I have spent a ton of time and resources and energy on the podcast, Ogetti Studios, YouTube channel, podcast every Monday, so that's been taking up a lot of my time and energy, and I've been really excited. It's been probably the most fun thing I've gotten to do in a long time. I really enjoy that, so hope to keep doing this, and then on this channel, just post this, the gender reveal, um, once the car is back, but... I gotta keep you guys updated a little bit here, but we gotta fire this thing up. See how it, see how she idles, make sure that, get some temperature in it, and we can uh, kinda go from there, I guess, so. Let's see. It's a good idea to check the oil, cause who oh knows. Looks good to me. Let's see if this thing starts up. She's been parked for a while, but definitely got some warm ethanol. That ain't a problem. Sounds pretty good. I haven't filled this all the way up yet, but it has a bunch of water in it. Let's see if that is causing a leak. Hopefully not. Once I fill it up, I mean, maybe under pressure it'll be different, but let's see. It's leaking right here. What the heck? Okay, guess I gotta take, pull the radiator out and I'll double check it. But it might be leaking down there on the radiator, but I think it's all just leaking right here. All right, well, I just gotta find a little 90 degree hose like this. You can see right there, the hole. This is my little coupler. It's like corroding, which is interesting. It's just aluminum. I don't know how it's corroding, but I guess that's how it works. So, I understand aluminum corrodes, but not like that. And only one spot 
Weird. So, time to find a piece like this. I have a box of hoses somewhere. Somewhere. All right. This is the one I need to replace. So I need to find, this one's pretty good. This might be it. I don't know if that'll make it on there though. Okay, so we'll try this one first. This one should do it though, but I'd rather use this one. All right, fixed all this up. It's holding water. Pretty freaking solid. I just need a new overflow, but pretty pumped with that. Uh, order a couple parts for this and it should be ready to go. Better than I was um, kind of expecting. So the oil filter is pretty clear. You know, the bottom has a little bit of material, but not like blown up engine material. It's like grime. But yeah, I think the oil may have just been really hot or something along those lines. Ethanol filled, hot, not full enough. A couple different things could have been the cause of that, um, but not too bad. So another funny thing is, look at the balancer from running over a cone. It's got red on it from, or orange from, yeah, blowing over a cone. That was pretty fun. I don't know when it happened, but it's fun. It's always good. Hit, hit your local cones. People appreciate it. the door open so I don't want to leave it on too long it's just ethanol but the, there's an exhaust fan over there anyway so not bad I'm pretty uh pretty excited about that I saw 34 36 ish psi cold so that's a very promising thing to see especially um after I thought it may have been blown up I saw like 24 I didn't see anything in the oil but I'm pretty happy with that that's freaking awesome I was a little worried about that. Can't, can't lie. I was definitely worried. Let me open this door a little bit here. Guess it's not an exhaust fan because it's pulling air from outside in. But man, that's a huge relief. I thought this thing was uh, smoked and we're gonna have to put a motor in it or bearings or something. But it seems to be ready for another burnout. So this is probably not the correct way to do this. A recalled um, floor jack, scissor jack but it's kind of pushing this out a little bit, but it's not really. So something I've always wanted to try is lowering the wing down. Um, obviously I'm not gonna do back-to-back -back testing immediately, but it is something I've wanted to do. It has this like, I don't know, half inch lip right now three quarter inch lip. So I'm gonna lower it down and see where that gets us. All right, so there's two holes on the back side here and two holes on the front. It was max high, now I set it to max low. And very low now. So about quarter inch roughly. So pretty, pretty legit, see if that this, in theory, should help mile an hour. I don't, pro I probably don't need as much downforce as it was giving, but the mile an hour would be nice to gain a couple. That's, that's what I hear people say, a couple mile an hour, potentially, I don't know, we'll see. Um, scan the QR code, subscribe, you know the deal. I think it's time to finally repair this tire. So this is the Varla scooter that I have, and this back tire is popped. I have a new inner tube for it, but I gotta pull it off and change it. 
it should be easy, but the way that the wiring goes in, it goes in like somewhere over here. So I'll probably have to take this plate off. Let's see what we're working with down here. Well, pretty extensive job to take this thing apart. So you have to take this ring off, but you have to take the brake rotor off, take the whole motor out. Um, but it is nice that it's sandwiched together. I would like to have solid tires, that would be nice, but for now we'll just run with the uh, air. That's the old one. I put some air in it. You can see I tried to put some, uh, tried to put some stuff in here to stop the, the leak. Some, some fix a flat. It was like three holes that it was coming out of. Yeah, so there's the inner tube. New, old. All right, she's back ready for these streets. This thing, honestly, is my most terrifying scooter I own. own. I think it goes like 40 miles an hour. It has like all these like, you know, eco single dual. So if you wanna be on turbo mode and dual motor, this thing rips. I don't know how charged up it is. Oh, oh my goodness. See it as a key. Thirty-eight miles on it, and then you do this, and then you select gears. So it goes up to three different gears, and this thing just flies. When you like leave the line, both wheels will spin. It'll kind of do that Tesla thing where it's like, and like, kind of like, you can feel them hooking up, but like, you know, when like an electric car does it. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but like. They kind of like skirt the tires, but they're like gaining traction and you can feel the horsepower. This does that. It's a very odd sensation, but it's pretty freaking awesome. So back on the road, ready to go for racing someday. So there's a good example. I just launched it like from a roll and it makes like a two foot black stripe from the front tire. All the weight transfers to the back. So the front gets really light and it just like skirts the front until it hooks up. Pretty, pretty freaking terrifying all around. Well, you guys already know the deal. I am an addict when it comes to small electric vehicles for uh, local transportation, I guess you could call it. We got a new one. Um, I have multiple bicycles, scooters, and all kinds of things. My bicycles actually have a lot of miles on them. So one of the bicycles has, the electric bikes has like 250 miles on it. The other one has like 200 on it. I ride almost every single day, try to get as many miles as I can. And today we got another one. So here it is, the uh, Engway. Let's give this thing a try. Now this one's a little classier. Maybe Bronte will steal it. It's freaking together. The M20 Ingwe, however you say that, is freaking done. E-N-G-U-I-E. 
I don't know how to pronounce words. I'm not very literate, but it's almost done. Um, I didn't put the headlights on and I didn't put the front fender on, but if you guys have time to do all that before you take it for a test drive, you know, you're a better man than me. Got a little screen right here. We know our battery and stuff. Take this guy out. Actually, it has directions. Let's leave it. Okay, so hold button for two seconds to switch on off display. Press button for menu. Man, this thing's legit. Look at look at the batteries. It's got friggin' two of them. Charge each one? You do. Oh, you turn them both on too. Oh my goodness. That thing is freaking serious. Woo. Okay, so I feel the battery. Oh ho. Up gears, up gears. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Oh crap. She's ripping. Setting five, 33 kilometers, 40. Holy crap. Okay, maybe I should slow down. This thing's really comfortable though. All right, now it's all put together. Look at how freaking badass this thing looks. Dual batteries that you turn on, 95 mile range. I put the headlights on, fender, dual brakes. I love the throttle on it. It's the whole handle, not like somehow they just have like a, this is like a real throttle. 10 speed, so if the battery dies, you still have plenty of pedal. I really like using e-bikes because um, I, I make up ground quickly, which that's one of my things that always bugs me about regular bikes is I want to go for a bike ride, but it takes me hours to get anywhere because they're just slow moving. So this is fast and I have to pedal. I, I still pedal. I don't just use the e-bike. I, I try to exercise as much as possible and I use e-bikes to do it. So this one's going to join the rotation. We'll see how this thing does. I'm excited to rip this thing tomorrow morning. It's looking like looking like we got some rain coming, but look at how sick this thing looks. All right, playing around with this thing. Ton of fun so far, very fast. This thing rips. When you give it some gas, she's going. So, nice little scenic spot right here to take a look at this thing. Good looking bike. Really nice headlights. Looks super sporty and it rides very comfortable. I could definitely see this for a very long distance. Um, I'm trying to figure out the pedal assist still. I haven't gotten it quite figured out yet, but you know, 1.6 miles in. And uh, we'll see what another, you know, 200 miles feels like on this thing. Mm -hmm. 